guys, it's your girl Natalie, the one true diamond coming at you with this is Monday morning chit chat. Monday morning chit chat. It is Monday morning. I'm on my way to work just as late as I can be. I could not get out of the One thing what I did wrong was let me tell you, y'all know what I did wrong? I did my hair. I should have done my hair on Sunday. When I have plenty of time, but I said no. If I don't wash it today, then I'm not going to wash it tonight. And then it's going to keep dragging on and on and on. And I'm going to go another week. I already went two weeks without washing my hair. And <coughs> which is fine because I sometimes I do go two weeks with my um, braids and my hair still feels a little moisturized. Sometimes I will not touch it for two whole weeks. And that seemed to work well for my hair. It seems like the less I mess with it, the less I manipulate it. Then, um, yeah, y'all, did I just cough in that cough in my mouth with you guys? If I did, I apologize. I just thought about that. I got a dry tickle in my throat. I'm like, I believe I coughed and didn't say, excuse me. Excuse me. If I did. But, um, like, um, I have, um, yeah, so sometimes I won't, and I know I was supposed to, I started using my wild growth oil. I did it twice in the last two weeks, and that was the first week. <laughs> first week I did it twice, the second week, did I do it last week? I might have done it one day last week or something like that, so maybe three times in the, in the weeks I've been doing it. But when I took my hair down this morning, it, and I hadn't done anything else, you guys, I had not sprayed it with my... Um, little oil and water mixture. I had not sprayed it with my little um, leave-in conditioner mixture. None of those things had I done, okay? And when I took those braids out, it was just as moisturized as it could be. My hands had more, you know, like the oily stuff on it. So, yeah. I like that wild growth oil. I think it's keeping my hair very moisturized. I have put, like, Shea Moisture leave-in conditioner, and that's what I, um, twisted with as well as putting the wild growth oil in it and that seemed to work perfectly fine and it's just it's like I can't really like in two weeks I don't really see any growth difference and not like I expected to see any in two weeks but I maintain my hair is still the sides are touching right here and the back is my sides and backs are about at the same my um, front is right here so yeah so it is really Growing. When I wear it out, you cannot tell because my hair is the tightly coiled hair. <laughs> and those curls just, mm, we ain't stretching out none. That's what they said. We, we're not stretching out. I don't know what you expect us to do, but we ain't going nowhere. We're going to stay right here, tightly, tightly tucked in to your scalp. <laughs> God, so yeah, so y'all know for some reason I just envision. I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. Now this is going. This is funny. I, mean, I y'all, this is funny, but it's the truth. When I started saying I was gonna go natural, my vision was Joan Clayton's hair. Y'all know from um, Girlfriends, um, Tracy Ellis Ross. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> I'm like. And then as I got into this journey and my hair wasn't doing that, I'm like, um, what's wrong? And then I'm like, your hair ain't never been that long. <laughs> it's never been that long. It's never been that thick. What makes you think it's going to do that now? But that is my hair idol. Oh my God, I love that big hair. I love it. And I see my niece who started out after me. Oh my God, I just hate her. Her hair just looks, she's got that Joan Clayton thing going on. And I hate her. I hate her. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love Chrissy. Chrissy always had long, thick hair hanging down by her backside. So she always had long hair. So you could expect that with her to have a big poof Joan Clayton. And so I'm like, okay, so, well, who can I fashion myself behind? <laughs> Look, Esther Roth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, Florida on good times. That's that's who I need to look at as a role model. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh God, I'm sorry you guys. I have been in a laughing mood all weekend long. I don't know. Just stuff tickling me that ain't even funny. <laughs> oh, but that's funny to me. Oh my God. Oh Lordy. But I'm going to tell y'all something else too. If I have not laughed at Donald Trump, he is such I don't know what's wrong with Donald Trump, but he is something wrong with that man. Oh my God. I'm like, eh, please, I know these people have got to get serious about who they're going to vote for, and it do not need to be Donald Trump. He is going to start a World War III. <laughs> do y'all hear me? Oh my God. In Chicago, he couldn't even have his rally. And he tickles me, get him out of here, get him out of here. And when the man has stormed the stage, he was like, <laughs> and he made this comment of, I don't know what it would have been, but it would have been some pow, pow, pow. I'm like, what in the world is wrong with Donald Trump? I'm like, this man is crazy. He just needs to, oh my God. And you know you need you do need a president with backbone. Don't get me wrong. You need somebody with backbone who ain't afraid to talk, who will stand up, mean what they say. But you need someone with some tact about them as well to not start riots. Oh my God! Oh, I'm like, oh, now yeah, those people are wrong. That's up there. That's right. And don't get me wrong. Don't say, oh, you just blinded. No, it's not a race thing. They're wrong about the rioting. But he riles you up. He says things that gets people. He stirs people up in a wrong way, not a positive way. I think a leader should be able to um, get you stirred up, get you pumped up, hyped up on positivity, not negativity. That is a good leader to me. And the only thing I see him getting riled up is people riled up for violence. Just like the man that just sucker punched that boy. You know, which, yeah, he got arrested for doing that. But, I mean, the police already had the boy for causing the disturbance. Don, the Donald or whatever y'all want to call him. Uh, told him to get him out of here. Get him out of there. <laughs> He's already was gone out of there. <laughs> and, um... Then he gonna sucker punch the boy. He was just so riled up. I mean, it's just hatred. It is hatred, guys. And I'm telling you, you would think that times have changed, but they are not. There are still people who hate black folks today. People of color, of race, they're whatever religion they are. They just hate us. They hate us. And it's sad. And you know, sometimes I know when I get some of those folks that come in and I'm teaching them and they don't want to listen to what I have to say and they question everything that I say to them. And then I go if um, I go get my charge nurse and let her tell them and then, oh, it's okay, I understand now. No, you understood perfectly well what I was saying, but it just took someone of a different color to tell you what I was trying to tell you but you didn't want to listen you know so we still see some of those things today and it's just you know it's just it's disheartening and it's sad that you know we have come so far as a people and then people still look down and don't think I'm saying that my race is perfect because it's not I can't stand these young people and I can't say I can't stand them because it's just their generation of what they do what do we wear the hip huggers and the bell bottoms so but I just I can't take this pants hanging down stuff my son the baby boy thought he was going to do it. I'm like if you don't pull those pants up my oldest son He used to sag his pants trying to do it, but he didn't need to try to do it. Lord, please forgive me, because he would kill me and be like, Mommy, <laughs> I'm like, you already sad, and your pants is probably going to hang anyway, because we trying to find something to fit you. Don't be letting them sag on purpose. <laughs> oh, God, he's going to be like, Mommy, you is something wrong with you. 
But anyway, I used to hate when he do it. Used to do it too, and I'm like, pull up your pants, and he would get mad and pull them up. I'm like, it's not cute. Do you know where that style originated from? Do you know what it is? Before you start copying behind somebody doing something, find out what it stands for and what it means. You know, um, or where did it come from? Whatever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It looks. Oh God, they're working on this bridge. Jesus. Woo. But anyway, um, yeah. So it's not cute. So I'm not saying we have a perfect race. I'm not saying that whatsoever because we definitely have flaws as well in our younger generation. Some of the older ones too because they have seen so much that they've seen so much and they live so much that it's hard for them to forget what they have seen and live. And even my mom who is my mom's 72 now. She remembers um, the Ku Klux Klan coming in the neighborhood where she grew up at and burning crosses in people's yards. She remembers those things. So, um, you know, but my mom, she's not prejudiced or anything like that by no means whatsoever. She is not, has never been, never raised us to be that way. But she remembers those things. So that's what I'm saying. Some people might have seen a little bit more than what she saw um, back in her time. So, you know, you can kind of understand. You kind of factored into not trusting people because of um, that one particular thing. Or that one thing that you have seen. And for so long, you know, we have been passed over jobs and positions. But now there are things where we are... You know, we have crossed those barriers some, but, you know, I just wish sometimes our young people would, you know, represent us a little better. So now I tell my sons, I said, do you know how hard the people of the past had to fight so that we could get this, we could get an education, and you don't want to go to school, you want to skip school, you don't want to go to school. You know, I, I used to talk to them and, and tell them these things because, you know, these people fought hard. Some guy, you know, and I used to make them watch those shows when it would come on, look, one time a year on Black History Month. <laughs> you know, they would show these programs. Now we can see them whenever because we have Netflix and all these other things going on. But back then in the day, you know, it was like one time a year. So we would sit down and we would watch these things. I said, do you see what these people went through? And I'm sure this is not the extent, you know, because you can't show all this graphic detail on television, you know, nowadays of what, you know, our people have went through. Represent yourself in the best possible way that you can. Make your forefathers who went through all this proud to say, yes, I went through this. I went through this for a reason. Sometimes I said, I know Martin Luther King and the Malcolm X's and, you know, the um, Mega Evers and all of those that just got killed because of the cause. I know sometimes they just shake their heads and like, why, you know, why? I could have had a quiet, humble life but no they couldn't because God had a call and a reason and a purpose and a mission for them to know their lives wouldn't have been quiet you know they did what their purpose was that was their purpose and you know that's why they made such a great impact but I'm just saying you know as I was talking to them but yeah it's it's just sad it's just sad and I really don't know who I'm going to vote for I really do not know who I'm going to vote for. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of uncertainties in this election as saying that I have a good rock hard candidate that I am going for because I really don't have anybody. I need to start paying more attention to um, the debates and things like that because it's time. I mean, primaries for North Carolina is tomorrow, Tuesday, is our primary elections where we can vote in the primary. So, I really, I really have no clue. I know it won't be the time. <laughs> God. Oh, Lordy. Mm. It's a me me going out when Donald Trump becomes president. Don't say nothing to me on that boat back to Africa. I said, they are so stupid. Oh, my God. It's funny to me. I know somebody's like, mm, I'm going to get a thumb down for that, I know. But, oh, God, but it's funny to me. Don't say nothing to me. Nah. I done been to Africa. It's not so bad. It's not good either. They so behind time there. Oh, goodness. Living there. 
I don't think I could do it. But anyway, thank God for the waking you up this morning, starting you on your way, giving you another chance to get it right. It's always a blessing, baby, get it right. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.